Hey guys, welcome back to Range Work Wednesday. Obviously we are not at the range, which is the whole point of Range Work Wednesday. But after doing Range Work Wednesday for a couple of weeks, I realized that it sucks to bring my camera and try to film for YouTube purposes or content purposes really at all while I'm at the range. It's something that can be fun to do from time to time, but doing these weekly videos makes it so that every single time I go to the range, unless I go multiple times a week, I'm trying to film a YouTube video. And that is 0% fun. And it's also not productive at all. And so I can't even really be practicing what I'm preaching as I'm showing you guys these drills, skills and assessments and all of those things. I don't actually get to practice. My only time practicing is really in dry fire and I don't get to have a productive range day on my own. And so I am closing out the Range Work Wednesday series for now. There might be some sporadically here and there over the next couple of months, but it will no longer be a weekly thing. In the next couple of weeks, I do want to roll out Two Minute Tuesdays again though, and in those, I want to be doing some two minute gun reviews. So keep an eye out for those. But in this week's video, I'm going to be putting together my new Double Alpha Lynx belt. While I talk about a couple of things concerning competition, I talk about my Walther Q5, how I wound up kind of selecting that, and I want to answer some Q&A questions from you guys over on Instagram. So really quickly, I wanna talk about why I picked this belt system at all. And that is actually just because I had a number of ladies that are shaped similar to me recommend this belt. And one of the main things that I was concerned about as I was looking into competition belts was how it would kind of curve around my hips. I have kind of sharp corners on my hips and a lot of belts will cause me a lot of problems. That's why I don't use a traditional style carry belt for carrying a gun just because it's uncomfortable for me. And so if you hear explosions throughout this video at all, it's because we live near a military post. And so you're going to hear explosions. Anyways, the reason that I chose this is because a number of awesome ladies that are using this product recommended it to me and it kind of made it a no brainer for me and I wanted to avoid any major discomfort, anything right out of the gate, because if I'm uncomfortable at a competition on the range, it's going to make shooting a lot less fun. So I wanted to just mitigate that issue right out of the gate with picking a belt that a lot of ladies are recommending. That said, it comes completely disassembled. So I'm gonna be sitting here assembling this with you guys while I answer some Q and A questions. I want to get into pistol competitions, but don't know where to start. Um, more than likely there is going to be matches available near you unless you live in the middle of actual nowhere. And the best way to find them is to go to practice score. So like you're spelling practice, but once you get to the practice, instead of practice, it's practice score. Go to practicescore.com and use the map feature, which, do which doesn't work very well. It's not terribly intuitive, but once you figure out how to use the map feature, you can look at matches within, you know, a certain distance from where you live. And that's the best place, that's the best way to find matches near you is to use the map feature and look there. And more than likely you'll find something. So that's the best way to get started is just to find a match near you. Um, you can go and be a spectator. I watched a bunch of matches before I ever participated in any. Uh, it was really intimidating to me and it helped me to kind of go and see what it was all about um, before showing up and embarrassing myself in front of a bunch of strangers. Oh no, this is gonna be hard. Is it supposed to be that hard? Oh no, I feel like I need a mallet. I guess that means it's gonna be sturdy though, right? Well, I guess that's what I get for not watching the assembly video before I got started. I need to use a hammer for this. So I'm just going to set all of them and then uh, hammer them in when I'm not trying to do a Q and A video. What's your favorite organization for carry pistol competition, carry pistol competition and why? How do you get started in the sport? So specifically for carry pistol, like if you want to do competition from concealment, I mean, you can, pr you can do it in a lot of different disciplines, disciplines. I don't know that I know what all of the options are out there. There's lots of options for shooting sports, but if you're specifically wanting to shoot from concealment, then I'd probably recommend IDPA because it's kind of focused in that direction. I mean, there's plenty of people not using concealment stuff in um, IDPA, but 
I think that you'll find that is, you'll find more of that in IDPA than you will probably in a lot of other pistol shooting sports. I don't know that I have a favorite though. I know that there are a lot of politics uh, surrounding various shooting sports and I try not to get involved, but sometimes they're so drama filled that it's hard to at least not have some form of an opinion. Fortunately, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> so um, I will just compete in whatever my local club is putting on. If I have the gear for it, I'll do, I'll do two gun, I'll do USPSA, I'll do IDPA, I'll do um, PCSL, which is a newer one, which is a lot of fun to do. PCSL is a lot of fun. You should try it if there's one near you. Is it worth a $200 intro to competition class or just show up and sign up? Well, that just kind of depends. <laughs> That's just gonna kind of depend. That's gonna depend on who you are as a shooter, like where you're at. Um, that's going to depend on who's putting the class on. Like I can't tell you whether or not a $200 class is worth it because I don't know what instructor you're talking about. But I will say that I have taken classes that cost many dollars and they can, they, they, are, they were worth it for me, for me personally. Um, and I think that a lot of people, if they have the budget for it, um, should absolutely invest, um, invest some dollars into spending time with a good instructor. And that's kind of a longer, more detailed question as to like, what is a good instructor? I'd like to address that question in a different video, but I think there's a lot to that question, a lot to that answer as a result. So if, I don't know if the, if the $200 class would be worth it to you, uh, person, personally, Wendigo, Maine, <laughs> But if you're safe with your gun, then you shouldn't have a problem showing up to a local match, letting them know that it's your first time. Um, they'll walk you through kind of the safety stuff and what's kind of required of you as a shooter. Um, and typically they'll let you watch other people do the stage first and all of that. So for, for the most part, you can pretty much just show up. But if you want that additional confidence, um, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with seeking out more training. How can I find live fire competitions in the area? Again, that's gonna be found through practice score using their map feature. And that's actually another way that you can track down good training near you. Um, not necessarily through practice score, but you can find good instructors at matches. This isn't necessarily a question in the Q and A on Instagram, but I have been getting people asking me this question in the comments section. I've had a couple people message me about it and that is, why I chose the Walther Match Q5 and Steel Frame. First of all, this gun is a chunk. <laughs> like it is, not only is it a big gun, but it's also a big gun like for me. This is a big gun in my hands. It's also heavy because it's a steel frame. So I don't know a whole lot about guns focused in the competition realm. It's really not like beyond, beyond a SIG and what they make for competition, I really don't know what's good out there. And so when I decided that I wanted to take competition more seriously, I wanted to get a competition set up, belt, uh, gun, optic, the whole thing, it was kind of a huge learning curve, a huge learning curve. And let me tell you, being new at something is honestly not that much fun. <laughs> and so I, I basically was going largely off of other people's recommendations as I was looking for different guns. Uh, the main one that I was considering was the Canic Rival steel frame. And I think I actually, I would have done that. I would have done the Rival over this had this not been offered to me for a ridiculously affordable price. Like I absolutely did not pay anything close to MSRP for this gun. And, uh, Basically, it was just like, I would have been silly not to take the opportunity to um, purchase it at the price that it was available to me for um, and try it out. I'm planning on giving it a solid couple of months with consistent, hopefully daily dry fire, mostly daily dry fire. And I want to give it a certain number of matches and everything. It came with its holster. It came with it with multiple magazines. It came with an aftermarket trigger. Like it came all set up for me to just do the best I could with it. And so, yeah, that's really how I chose it. It's not like super detailed or 
an exciting way to select a gun. It was just a stupid good deal and I couldn't really pass it up. And because I have gotten somewhat predictive uh, about the questions and concerns that may show up in the YouTube comment section, I will say that I didn't get the opportunity to buy the Q5 at a good price because of anything that has anything to do with Instagram or YouTube or anything like that. Uh, it was just somebody at the range that we go to needed to part with it and they were selling it for a great price. So that kind of thing, it just worked out. It did come with a different optic though. It came with the, the Trigicon RSO, but it was the like one MOA. Is that right? Can, can that truly be what it was a one MOA? No way. That's just silly. It was something silly though. <laughs> Whatever the like lower number MOA option that's available in the SRO, it came with that. And it was just like, it was silly. I thought that I could just use it cause it came with that on there. And I didn't want to switch the optic out. Like obviously the Trigicon RSO has a great reputation. And so I didn't want to go, like part of the reason I bought it was cause it was a ready made solution. And so I really didn't want to mess with getting a different optic, but that, I think it was a one MOA, three MOA? No, I think it was a one MOA. And I think that's silly. If you're watching this and you have a one MOA, we can be friends, but I think it's silly. <laughs> so I did wind up selling the one MOA and buying a new five MOA. And I like that a lot better. The problem with the uh, smaller number MOAs, especially once you get down to one MOA, it's just, it's too squirrely. Like it, it provides way too much feedback for my eyeballs. And I would much rather have that higher number. Five MOA is kind of, it's nice. Like five and six MOA dots. I'm down with that. I don't like the, Anything, anything below probably five is not my thing. I'm kind of thinking this might be getting long enough. Yeah, once I put the ratchet on there, I feel like that's gonna be long enough. I'm gonna go hammer these in and I think we're pretty much about done. Okay, I have one last thing to assemble here. I'm gonna put the ratchet thingy on there. And I have one more question to answer. And that is, did it ever, and does it ever still make you nervous to compete in front of men? I love this question because I don't think that a lot of people think to ask it, but I think a lot of, at least ladies are thinking it. Like, isn't that kind of intimidating to compete or go to classes that are a bunch of dudes? And to tell you the truth, I think boys are pretty scary. Being in a class setting, being at a match, especially when I was first, especially when I was first starting, was so intimidating. It's not intimidating anymore, at least not competitions. And it's not because guys are actually scary or because um, the guys in the classes or at the matches put pressure on me or anything like that. In fact, I don't think I've ever really, like I've never had really a bad experience or anything like that. It's just that I think that I put pressure on myself especially when so often I am the only girl showing up, not so much to matches. There's usually one other girl, two other girls at matches, but often to classes, I'm the only girl there. And the reason that that is intimidating is not because guys are intimidating, but it's because I would put pressure um, on myself being that I was the only girl. So I felt that if I showed up to a class or I show up to a match and I just, totally flop, like I do, I do a terrible job that it gives like girls a bad rap, like, oh, you shoot like a girl kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Like being the only girl at matches, oh, I was supposed to be assembling this while I was talking about it. Um, being the only girl at matches and classes can absolutely be intimidating at first, but now that I've done it so many times, it's not really anymore. Like maybe at certain classes, I could definitely think of like classes that I could take that would feel intimidating, but for the, for the most part, especially showing up to a, a match, it's something that I've absolutely gotten used to. And I've really only ever had really positive experiences from. And honestly, like there are jerks that show up, but you like can spot them from a mile away. <laughs> and so you just, you just don't, you just don't uh, go into their, why can't I, you don't uh, squad with them. You just don't squad with them. You can, you can see them from a mile away. There are certainly uh, people that, if I see their name um, in practice score, I just won't. I just won't. 
go into their group because they're unpleasant to be around. So that's my really long answer. That took me way longer than the guy on YouTube said it was gonna take me, but that's because I'm chatty Kathy over here and I still have a lot more to assemble. I have to put the uh, magazine carriers on there. That's gonna be a little bit more complicated, I suspect. So wish me luck with the rest of this and I'll see you guys in next week's video.